Hello everyone, I am Mansi Sharma and you are watching E4M Pride of India Brands, a series that celebrates the guts and the glories of top SMBs in the country. These brands have not only created a successful market presence for themselves and amazing customer experiences, but are immensely contributing to the Make in India mission of the country and its economy. Today, we are glad to have with us Ms. Smita Murarka, the Chief Marketing Officer at Duroflex one of the most trusted sleep solutions providers in India. Started in 1963 by the late PC Matthew, the brand today holds 21% of the overall market share, making it the second largest brand in the category and managed to clock in rupees 600 crores in revenue as a company in the last fiscal, despite the many, many challenges created by the pandemic. Smita will be telling us all about the brand journey from this uh, uh, from this past century and also how marketing has helped evolve the brand and create the strong market presence that it holds today. Welcome Smita, we are glad to have you here with us today. Thank you so much Mansi and thank you for walking us down the memory lane as a company and as a brand. It's indeed uh, been so many generations and so many variations and now post COVID, a lot that we've learned and we've done as a company. So thank you for this opportunity. Absolutely, absolutely my pleasure. Uh, so let's start with just discussing this whole journey, as I said, many generations, many ups and downs, uh, latest being the COVID. So how has the brand, you know, been evolved, how it created a space for itself in the market? And let's start from when you started, how was the market situation back then and how Duroflex came into being? Sure. Um, as a company, we've always uh, been a company that's really worked from the heart. Earlier, um, you know, when it was uh, fully promoter driven and owner driven, it was something that was born out of a passion. We started in the backwaters of Kerala, uh, really using raw materials, um, you know, uh, from rubber plants, from latex, from coir, and starting it very humbly. I think that's really the strength and the culture of the company. Having said that, today uh, we can proudly say the organization is mostly professionalized. I joined just pre-pandemic in, in a very difficult time uh, when uh, we had huge plans to uh, really uh, take things forward, but in a little slower approach. Uh, we didn't know we were hit by something that was, uh, you know, something that was totally new to the world. But uh, now in hindsight, that, that was the biggest um, boost that uh, SMBs like us uh, got, you know, where Make in India as a story was something that came to the limelight. Uh, brands which had stood the test of time uh, had worked slowly and steadily to have their home really in order, gave a lot of marketers like us strength to take the brand to the next level. So today uh, we have been able to become just from an offline brand to a completely omni, uh, more digital focused uh, brand, more for the younger consumer. We've been able to strengthen our uh, smaller homegrown e-com only brand Sleepyhead to the next uh, level and, and make it a leader in e-com also, while Duroflex as the brand is also a leading brand. So two brands which have really uh, grown very well. Uh, Duroflex, we've uh, completely the changed the way we, we looked, we thought, and the way we operated. So our experience centers, which was started uh, just when pandemic happened at a time when uh, retail was almost shut down, right? We uh, designed and launched state-of-the-art experience centers, which are world-class, and we completely changed the way uh, offline selling was done in a category like this. So honestly, uh, pandemic has been very exciting uh, because uh, when um, everything stood at, at standstill, we got the opportunity to come together as a team and really unlock our potential as a brand and uh, take it to the next level. Uh, deploy ideas which were unthought of for this industry. And I come from a very lifestyle fashion background where a lot of things have been done before, right? So being yeah. able to put those learnings into this industry, which was considered literally sleeping and very boring, uh, really refresh it and uh, you know make it something that was uh, totally consumer driven. A lot of passion in this company for actually the knowledge on sleep uh, really helped me yeah. uh, get all that together and start talking a lot about sleep as well. So uh, as a team, I think we've uh, definitely come together brilliantly in all uh, factors and that's really what makes a brand. Marketing is not about just putting out commercials out there, creativity out there, but it's how do you understand the business, get everything together and, and work like a single-minded 
well-oiled brand and in the last two years we've really learned the power of that definitely and we are seeing the impact that you are creating in the category and in the market uh, you mentioned that you are trying to convert yourself into a more youth focused a more digitally driven brand and if we talk about this consumer seg segment the youth of the country they are more about wellness they are more about lifestyle now they are more aware than ever so as many as opportunities as it has created i'm sure that there are also many competitors that are cropping up in this space there have been legacy brands there are new age brands how do you keep pace with the changing dynamics of the industry given the consumer that is coming is also very much evolved than a few years ago Absolutely. I think that's a very good question, Mansi. If you see our industry a few years back, especially pre-pandemic, right? Um, uh, most of the brands were uh, working like the legacy way. They were working by more dynamics of the industry codes, which was already created, right? And uh, they were disrupting brands in the online space because they have no baggage. So in most categories, we've seen uh, young online brands coming and disrupting the industry, right? So that was all going on. But a brand like ours, which has strength of both offline and the online capability, really helps uh, if you start thinking from a consumer point of view. So the only difference, if I can say amongst everybody else that we found in us, was we started thinking purely from consumer point of view. What does a consumer need? Even when lockdown was announced, you know, what was the sentiments? Didn't make any business a lot about how sleep impacts immunity, how, how sleep is a main focal point for your health. This was all new information two years back, right? So we, yeah. we did a lot of things which were completely consumer driven and consumer sentiment uh, oriented rather than just sell. I think that changing that uh, stance helped us become a more trusted brand for, for uh, the consumers while our products were great anyway. So having great product is the bigger necessity too that you can say all this but finally your product should talk and uh, to be able to connect the dots very well is something we uh, we really achieved in the last few years um, as far as competition goes uh, see our category the biggest uh, competition is not uh, one or two brands it is really the unbranded space mm. the awareness consumers need as to why should they buy a good product an innovative product like ours why should they spend on a brand and not buy an unbranded product which is maybe one tenth the price yeah. so even across income groups we've all seen growing up that we are buying cotton mattresses we are buying some unbranded mattress and that's really 60 70 percent of the industry even today um, unbranded as well as smaller unknown brands mm -hmm. regional brands so uh, that's really the challenge uh, that we have today. And uh, if there are more and more brands coming in, actually that's great for the industry because then consumers become more brand conscious. And then of course the strength of the brand plays out. So we are seeing this very positively that we've disrupted the industry through its marketing efforts, through its uh, product initiatives, through everything that we've done, the way we've done business also. And uh, we've been able to make everybody think that this is not an industry that needs to continue the way it did. Yes. Uh, possibilities are endless so uh, collective thinking on the category will only do India good I think uh, that's great um, so for us it's a positive thing that it becomes branded fully very soon and that's really the mission we have that's great that's great and a very unique way to look at the competition uh, especially when the world is like cutthroat right now you make it or break it uh, I'm sure that marketing also plays a key role as you said that the major challenge that you have is to make the consumer aware to make them realize the importance of having a good mattress or having good sleep solutions in their home. So was the brand always very uh, marketing heavy? What kind of strategies have played out over the years, over the different decades that you have had in your presence and how, where does, where does it stand right now? Yeah, um, see, as I said, uh, for a long time, this industry to even sell a branded product was a challenge. And then uh, brands were limited by the region because it's a heavy product. Uh, it costs yes. a lot of transport and it was offline only, right? So it was limited by the region that you belong to. So for a long time, uh, till pandemic also, we were largely south and then we had penetrated slightly into east, uh, west. We were not a fully national brand, even in offline. It was very challenging to do uh, we had already uh, started uh, doing a lot of marketing initiatives uh, a lot of activities to educate the consumer pre-pandemic also but uh, however uh, since we were a brand that was primarily offline and the mechanisms of digital hadn't evolved for this industry it was very difficult to make that connect 
uh, also when when your business is running in a fully oiled manner in a particular way it's it's not that easy to disrupt it right there is risks yes. associated so uh, it was kind of uh, uh, doing a lot of good things but in smaller scale in different mediums non digital mediums because that was really the situation um it was also done a lot uh, from a dealer point of view or from uh, you know getting more geographical expansion uh but we were the first brands that really reorganized a pro- product portfolio from a more consumer point of view right so we our product offering was already ready um, for mm-hmm. mattress category uh, we had redesigned it we had instead of just doing coir memory foam and and material based selling which the rest of the brands do we had done it based on consumer benefits and uh, there was a lot that could have happened uh, beyond mattresses but obviously um, you know that was something that we kept it on the side so um uh, the there, there were a lot of good uh, things that was already directionally being thought of uh, because um, you know the years of experience in product and uh, having your eyes and heart very uh, internationally aware you know i mean the, the team that was here uh, re- knew a lot about the industry from the international mm-hmm. markets also uh, however in reality it was difficult to execute but with covid um it gave us a lot of room to make firstly conversations around health because consumers became aware we were no more talking about uh, oh you know take your sleep seriously and people laughing at us because at that point you know burning the midnight oil was something we used to hold very proudly uh, on yes. our sleep and struggling was a great pride uh, mm-hmm. so you know in that mindset this conversation was uh, not happening very strongly coupled with all the reasons that i told you uh, but post pandemic the mindset change the fuel that we had changed a lot of um, and with covid has a change maker also uh, we were able to strike the right conversations think in the right direction and finally make a connect with consumers so the timing of it was brilliant i think uh, even for me to come in freshly and look at this category very differently and not the baggage of the past i think really helped um, mm-hmm. we could really disrupt it from a consumer's point of view we thought of marketing not only as brand communications and great uh, creative messaging but uh, m- making a consumers out- outside consumers point of view inside we were really that void that bought a lot of consumers point of view that uh, you know uh, said okay products what is it that something consumers need right now as products we launched our antiviral mattress protector we launched uh, pillows accessories work from home Yes. So a lot of extensions we were able to do because we thought of consumers' point of view. We were able to make a lot of sleep conversations because that was the thing that consumers needed. You know, have a lot of activities um, with health wellness. Issues. In fact, one of our recent biggest uh, property, uh, Sounds of Sleep, which is actually got by a lot of young parents across the country, and it was purely non-business related, but yeah. everybody. good because it was thought from a heart of a consumer uh, tg that we have mm-hmm. um so we we've, we've got an immediate acceptance on everything that we've done but it was not born to sell something only or born from an idea of to market something it was the other way around first what does the consumer need and then take it to the consumer so i think that perspective change that happened really helped us so i'm sure that uh, this whole process requires a lot of you know research and a lot of churning of data and insights so do you have a strong in house team for that or are you uh, partnering with an agency or any third party or uh, data service providers we do everything we do a mix of both uh, so obviously i had a lean team marketing team uh, as a join and i was to build the team and, and uh, that took some time because of the pandemic till then uh, we utilize the digital data very effectively today there's a lot of information out there if you're able to analyze it right what google yes. tells you amazon tells you and uh, if you understand consumers so we used a lot of readily available data secondary data that we have and the more we got online as a brand uh, more social active that we got we were able to read this data very well mm-hmm. so for a long time we were working with that uh, coupled with research partners and today we also have a robust uh, structure where we have a data insights team we have a consumer insights team so organically we were able to build a team first learning you know easily and then adapt to build a team internally but we continue to do a mix of all and um, what we've also learned over the last two years is agility is our biggest strength right and yes 
while we want to get perfect, agility comes uh, much more in order of importance to us right now. So of course, that balancing really helped us uh, to go ahead and do a lot of things. Great. Uh, and if I talk about the mediums of marketing that you're using, you said that you're trying to be a digital first friend. So does that mean that most of your marketing activities are centered on digital? Is it getting the maximum share of the pie? Or how is it divided actually amongst the media? Um, you can say it's digital first for sure. Mm -hmm. uh, because today, uh, consumers are absorbing and researching a content on digital, right? So the way we look at it is, the research process, the education process is mostly getting covered through digital. And then as an Omni brand, uh, we are looking to connect our offline and online a lot more, but we're already in that kind of a, a network where it organically happens. So uh, we believe that we should give the consumers choice to be comfortable where they shop from, right? Because we are present mm -hmm. everywhere. Uh, we are present uh, in our experience centers, we are present in uh, franchise stores, online, marketplace our own website there's a reason why they all exist so it's about consumers choice and giving them that confidence but really at the education process and the research process we do rely on digital quite heavily uh, as that is the behavior today and we believe uh, we should uh, you know lead or follow behavior of consumer then uh, like try to adopt much later so hmm. digital is that, uh, we from first and everything around it uh, as you said that uh, starting and much more like before the pandemic also you were heavily present only in the South Indian market, like a regional brand. So for brands in that category out of home marketing and also print marketing is, are, you know, two very effective tools that they use to communicate uh, to their consumers. So was the case same for you and how after you know trying to get into this the national space and building your strong digital presence, how have those uh, your approach to these two mediums uh, especially have evolved uh, see again uh, there are a lot of mediums which will come back uh, on track uh, once things normalize fully right uh, but um, there has been a huge digital shift and a lot of it is going to stay with consumers and uh, uh, while they might the rest of the mediums might not go away definitely the dependency on it uh, has drastically reduced and we'll probably continue so uh, in fact for us na national expansion and integrating the brand values nationally in a consumer's mind was possible because of digital it's hmm. very difficult to do it in uh, very uh, divided mediums right yes. so we use a lot of tv also where uh, mass media um, advertising is possible and you're able to get a large reach so but we have an always on digital uh, marketing uh, strategy so digital uh, i feel the medium uh, is going to be much stronger it's going to continue and in fact, we are all talking about Web3 and Metaverse and God knows what the next version of digital yeah. is. So that. But um, I think, yeah, it, it's um, it's a balance of generations and what the generations are used to. And as a brand that extends itself to many generations, we will continue to do a lot of activities in different mediums. That sounds great. That sounds interesting. And I'm also very excited to see what sort of creative and what sort of strategical uh, marketing activities we'll be seeing from the brand going ahead. As I said, TV is playing the key role. What sort of genres, what sort of programs and what sort of, uh, you know, brand voices and ambassadors you are looking at, you know, to expand uh, the brand resiliency? So, in fact, this year we got uh, Alia Bhatt as an Alia Bhatt. Yes which was also very disruptive uh, because she's a young uh, female, more gender neutral appealing sort of a personality, somebody who speaks her mind and uh, very unafraid to do so, which is really the youth of today. Somebody who invests a lot and she really actually genuinely believes in sleep and the power of it. So she was a natural choice for us because we wanted an authentic voice for this. Um, so overall that itself was a very disruptive choice, uh, which was earlier led by you know much older people Hmm. or some male centric um, so this this disruption actually was a risk for us but it's played out really well we've been able to take get much more wider, wider uh, awareness uh, using uh, uh, brand uh, we we have used a lot of mix of uh, so since today you know we are very strong in south and we are expanding in other territories it's important for us to you know uh, be strong in all areas so for us a uh, healthy media mix in 
across the country is something that uh, we really work very hard on. Uh, my team has uh, put in a long time to crack this and, and make sure this uh, comes out right. Um, and a bunch of different strategies, again, a mix of using data, uh, understanding the medium, but also taking some risks on every medium. I think for us, that combination has worked in every field, including our TV strategy. So we've used uh, genres across GC news, a lot of different uh, programs. Uh, we've been able to you know, do quite well on that. Uh, coming back to the product side, uh, many people would say that diversification you know, is the key strength for any business. And Euroflex too has started entering into the related industries, be it in the linen space or uh, be it in the furniture space. So how are you building that part of the business and what's the vision uh, to it going forward? How big you are planning to make it? See, as I said, uh, product is our backbone, uh, right? And it's uh, finally the proof of the pudding. Your product should be so great that uh, the word of mouth is very strong. And uh, mm -hmm. ultimately what you're able to generate as a you convert and then you know a lot of people are talking about your brand so uh, for marketing product is an equally important area where we, we um, work very closely with consumer insights we work very closely with the design team um, to really put out categories and products which are beyond what we are great at and known for also uh, because today if the consumer is coming to us and buying a mattress uh, the sleep comfort and solutions come for, from a lot of other products around that. And it's important for us to uh, be able to offer um, great quality in that entire spectrum, right? So as we speak, we've expanded into accessories, mattress protectors, even uh, roll-up mattresses, which uh, are uh, necessary for e comms you know, because they're e easy to transport, uh, yeah. which is quite uh, We've launched bed linen, uh, which are also anti-bacterial, uh, which is mm -hmm. which has got launch a comfortable uh, sofas and recliners which are great value which used Euroflex uh, foam products uh, as quality so uh, we were able to understand what consumer wants from Euroflex as a brand and what they will appreciate and what, where our strengths are and really go beyond and, and be able to offer a lot more um, yeah because product is something that will really drive the final use of what we are saying and help them understand so uh, say this when you have launched these new categories and new products, uh, how has you know the sales made in car proportion? How is it growing, or what uh, portion of the sale do you do they make for you right now? So all the new categories are contributing upwards of twenty percent for us overall, and that's that's an addition for us. Right? Mm -hmm. um, something that's really new, and uh, we are looking to uh, you know grow the share. While mattress is going to be our bread and butter. Uh, but seeing what are the categories. So for us, um, we are able to launch categories and then see the potential and test it out versus just have a plan. So we do believe in uh, giving a consumer what they need first and then building a whole plan around it. Now, and are there any new products or categories in the pipeline that you are planning to launch during this year or the coming year? Many actually. This year is going to be a quite an exciting year from a product launch. We learned a lot. So uh, wait and watch. I think we'll have a very busy year <laughs> to launch these products and hopefully uh, consumers like it too. And a lot of hard work and innovation has gone behind it. Excited to see all of that. Uh, my last question to you would be how important do you think is marketing for a business of any size, not just the small and medium businesses, but also the big businesses and how specifically in your category a marketer should approach you know reaching out to the consumers and what sort of communications do you think work the best in this category see i think everything i spoke is an answer to that question and the work we've done is a testimony to that uh, uh, be a consumer first don't be a marketer don't be bound by the budgets you hold you know and i started from nothing because covid hit and while we had certain plans uh, we were forced to start with very little money and today of course we have a robust uh, marketing uh, budget and calendar so don't be bound by budgets don't be bound by how you've approached it please approach it from being consumer first uh, in any category, there is a lot of disruption and this is the time really for marketers to shine. I think uh, years of telling uh, in a lot of companies, uh, years uh, uh, of uh, seeing that it has been treated like a support function. Uh, it's really not. It's, it's the heart and soul of any brand, especially a brand like ours. Um, 
because consumers are changing they are more demanding they are more aware you can't fool a consumer just by a nice looking uh, commercial right they're very aware they're educated so it's very important to be honest uh, and uh, very um, approach it with very clear intent across the awareness cycle to a consumer and that's only possible if you understand the business enough so uh, if you take me as an example um, marketing is something i'm very passionate about but throughout you know i've learned a lot about sales i've done roles in sales product uh, to be able to be a better marketer so uh, please ensure that you understand the business very well and also for companies uh, know the power and potential of a uh, uh, marketer and what a marketing team can do it is not an outside in support function it's really the heart which works with the rest of the team it is more inward looking getting the consumer insights in versus just doing some communication outside so i think it's just a matter of perspective and any brand that can understand that is really up for success we've seen a lot of uh, disruption in a lot of uh, startups um, you know great brands um, that we are talking about today like lenskart um, yes. both all of these brands have really disrupted a very unorganized category uh, yes. purely for the consumer um, of course technology and all that but understanding what consumer needs so yeah just an approach change would do the trick great uh, rightfully said and thank you so much for your time today smita it's always a delight to chat with you and all the best for all the upcoming launches Thank you, Mansi. It was really great going back to the memory lane, and all the best to you as well. Thank you so much.